So many people have been raving about the Mobula 7, I had to see for myself. Does it live up to its hype? Let's find out. The Mobula 7 is pretty cheap for what you get. For around 100 bucks, you get all of this. So let's just go ahead and see what's inside. You get a manual, you get the Mobula 7, you get a six port charger, you get a bag with a, a set of spare props, a little, I think this is the, this little plug is the adapter if you want to run uh, 1S instead of 2S. You get some extra screws, a tool, and then a prop remover tool. And then you get four batteries. There's two versions of the Mobula 7. There's the basic and then there's a standard. The difference is the charger. The basic kit comes with a USB charger, but the standard model or the standard kit comes with this charger, a six port charger that has a XT60 that can plug, that can use batteries from seven to 25 volts. And then a regular barrel plug that has an input or act, it has an output of 7 to 25 volts and it's got this little USB 5 volt out you can use to like charge your batteries and stuff and then the charger has a 0.2 or 0.6 amp selector charge current and then you can either do the 4.2 or the HV 4.35 and it's got a selector switch for this and it can charge up to six batteries at once. The Mobula 7 is a 75 millimeter 2S brushless swoop that uses 802 16,000 kV motors with 40 millimeter quad blade prop. It uses a F3 processor with a five amp four in one BioHeli S ESC running D-Shot and it's got all the standard features that most brushless hoops have today like um, a 40 channel 25 uh, milliwatt VTX Betaflight OSD with Smart Audio. It weighs 26 grams without the battery and comes in FR Sky, Fly Sky, and Spectrum versions. The canopy uses this pretty firm material that's not Lexan, but I'm not sure it's polycarb, but it feels pretty strong. Not sure what it is, but it stood up to my abuse so far and I haven't broken anything. One unique feature on the Mobula 7 that I haven't seen on any other hoops is the canopy is actually a two-piece canopy. The part that holds the camera is actually a separate part from the rest of the canopy and it's designed that way so you can tilt the camera like that. So you can just tilt it with your hand and then you can just tighten it down with this little Phillips head screw right here. So setting up the Mobula 7 is exactly like setting up any other quad that runs Betaflight. I'll just quickly go over my screens. The ports tab looks like they have UART 3 set up on Smart Audio which is pretty standard configurations. Um, the only thing I really had to change on this screen was I just turned down the motor idle throttle to a lower value because at 4.5, if you arm the quad, I guess because it's so powerful and light, the, the motor spin up way, way too fast and it almost feels like the quad wants to take off already. And then just uh, make sure you change put um, 180 here if you have the accelerometer on so you can arm your quad if you're too far angled. Um, I'm running a FlySky version, so these are the settings you need for FlySky. Everything else is pretty standard. This is to enable your beeper. In the PIDs tab, the only thing I really did was I turned down the rates to something that's actually lower than what I usually fly. I usually fly with this around 450 and this at 500, but because the Mobula 7 is so small, light, and powerful, I feel like the rates are actually really you need to turn them down because if not it feels way too twitchy so i just turn these down and it feels a lot better this way on the receivers tab because i'm using a fly sky transmitter i had to use this channel map but other than that everything else is pretty much the same in the modes tab this is pretty much how it comes set up from the factory you got arm you got your flight modes you got a beeper and then you got turtle mode. On the OSD tab, you basically just set up whatever you want to show in your OSD, but setting up the Mobula 7 is pretty much the same as setting up any other quad that's running Betaflight. It was super easy. And to bind the quad, there's a little bind button near the top right corner of the board. The bind is exactly like any other any other setup. You just 
um, hold down the bu bind button while plugging in the battery and then go in your transmitter and then you know hit bind and pff, it was it. The Mobile 7 is a 2S quad but it only weighs 26 grams. Just for comparison a Beta 75X which is also a 2S quad weighs 40 grams and then even a Tiny Hawk which is a 1S weighs 28 grams. So the Mobile 7 actually weighs less than a 1S Woo, but it's got the power of a 2S Woo. You can fly the Mobile 7 outside in a slight breeze and it won't even really affect it. At first I hated the way you have to power the Mobile 7. You have to run two 1S batteries to get the 2S power that the Mobile 7 needs. But I can see why it's done this way. At first I was thinking about swapping this double cable thing for an XT30 XT so I can run these Tattoo 300 milliamp or 450s that I run on my Beta 75X but these batteries are heavy. This battery, this 300 weighs twice as much as two of these 1S 250s. On such a small quad with small motors I don't think these bigger batteries are necessary. But for a bigger quad with bigger motors like the Beta 75X you almost have to run these bigger batteries because these bigger motors here just kill these little tiny batteries like nothing. the Mobula 7 for? Unless you're a super skilled pilot, the Mobula 7 is probably too fast and too powerful to be flying around inside your house on the 2S setup. Yeah, it includes this little, little plug thingy where you can plug it in one here and then plug in just a 1S battery and then it'll weaken the, the quad enough to where you can fly around the house. But 2S is just it's not made for indoor flight. This thing is perfect for like a park flyer or flying around in your backyard. Would I recommend the Mobula 7? Hell yes. You get a quad, four batteries, a spare set of props, extra screws, a tool, a prop remover tool, a screwdriver, and a charger for around 100 bucks. That thing's a steal and this thing is fast. Check back soon as I'll be making a video comparing five brushless hoops to see who I think is the 2018 king of the brushless hoops. And make sure you subscribe to this channel because in that video I'm going to be giving away a Mobula 7 and a Beta 75X. So you don't want to miss out on your chance to win one of these beauties. Well not these but you get what I mean. See you in the next one. Peace.